Hey guys, what's up? Jordan Sticker here back again with another OTB chess analysis. So in this game I played Walter. This was round 5 of this tournament and uh, me and Walter both were at 3.5 out of 4 at the moment because it's a 5 round tournament. And so the rest of the tournament, because this was a quite small tournament, because as I told you in a few a few videos ago, the next week is an important tournament for our club where the best players will be playing. So at this tournament, the best players weren't playing. So me and Walter both had three and a half out of four. We had both upset the, that 1970, and we were both having a good tournament. And so the nearest person to us was uh, at two and a half. And so e if we drew, we would tie for first and win $135 each. So I just had to make sure I didn't lose because if I lost, then I could I could get like ten sixty dollars. But if I won, also I could get my first ever CM norm because my rating performance would be over twenty one fifty. So uh, he started off with d four, and I forgot to mention I was black in this game. He's rated seventeen fifteen, I think. I play knight of six, knight of three, and e six, and we have e three, which signals a collie system with bishop d three and c three or some setup like this. So here I played c5, I attacked the center, he played bishop d3, and I played knight c6. This has all been played before, castles. I played d5, d5 is again still the main move here, and b3. Again, still the main move, and here I made my first sort of uh, inaccuracy of the game. The main move here is bishop d6. On bishop d6, I was just worried that he would take here, and I'd just have to waste the tempo. But actually, this turns out to be superior for uh, black. Because you always have this pocket threat of knight b5. So, the main move here is a3. And if I, he were to play something like this, then maybe I even have knight b4. So, bishop d6 was definitely the way to go. But I played bishop d7. And my idea was just to bring my rook to c8 and uh, this guy here as quickly as possible. So, bishop b2, bishop d6... So again, immediately I should have just played bishop d6 because he wouldn't take. Here he played knight bd2 and and here I think I made an inaccuracy, but the engine thinks it's the best move I took. And here I was expecting to get some sort of Grunfeld position, and I I wanted a Grunfeld position so that I could argue that maybe his king side bishop was a little bit misplaced because it should really be fianchettoed here. Or maybe I'm thinking of this wrong. Oh yeah, actually no, it makes perfect sense. But he played EX, and this has this has the idea of getting the knight to e5, and the knight's going to be very good on e5 because it'll. I don't want to take it because it'll fork my pieces, or I'll lose my bishop pairs, and my bishop d7 is now a hindrance because my knight no longer has a d7 square to go to. Because if my bishop was still on c8 and I castled here, maybe and at e, knight e5 I could take take and and go back to d7. So here I played rook c8, a pretty simple threat of playing knight b5 and working. So if he plays a nothing move, well then, sorry, knight, knight b4, he has to kind of defend this. So he'll kind of have to play like queen e2 or, or knight e5 and he'll have to lose his bishop. And I can, again, trade it off. So he did not go for that. He went for a3, stopping that move. And here I castled. And he played knight e5. And so here I was thinking between just the immediate bishop e8, just with the idea of taking and playing knight e7 or queen b6. I decided to go with queen b6 with a double attack here. And actually, this is where the game ended. He offered a draw, and I could feel my position, you know, sort of not, not ideal. So I agreed to the draw. And so... We tied for first with both four, four out of five. The nearest competition after the round was over had three. And I won this tournament. So it was a good win for me. But there's also something to, to like think about it. So my last game against Samuel, we had two games in one day, was a 68 move win, which took took at least five hours like I was I was pretty exhausted it was really tiring that game it wasn't like I could still not play like I could still play but it was it's just a little tired and I was tired and I, I just wanted to finish it over quickly 
But I could have also tried to win this game. But with a slightly inferior position, my opponent being slightly higher rated, I decided, you know, it, it's going to be really hard to win this game. And so I ended up with a tournament performance of 2050 something, which is good for me because I'm just just a 1650, so I performed well above my uh, current rating. And my rating is should go up by around 150 because uh, it will be my old time high. Because right now I I was provisional before this, so now I'm no longer provisional. And so this was my highest rating ever. So after I gain rating, it'll add the lifetime bonus because this is my old time high. But also I I had to think about um, we were if we if we uh, just drew the game. Well, then I could get my name on the trophy. I could get the money. But if I, I went for the win, I had to, I had to, I couldn't lose. Because if I lost, I could possibly tie for third, not get anything, not get that much rating. And I, and I felt my, like my position was worse. So I agreed on the draw. So that's the end of uh, this tournament. Thankfully, I won the tournament, as I told you, with four out of five. And I will... I am sorry for uh, doing this uh, this sort of 11 move draw, sort of grandmaster draw, I'll put that in the title. But there's some times where, like, I didn't really want to push on for a win because I felt my position was worse, my opponent was higher rated, we could both get the money and leave, we were both tired, our last games was quite long. And so, I, I just, I didn't see a better option. And also here... If we look on this line even further, he has knight f3. He had to play knight f3 to defend this guy. And here, I was thinking of playing uh, uh, bishop e8. So actually, immediately, you have to sort of... Uh, funnily enough, we they uh, they have a game in the database with knight e5. Which, I, I don't like knight a5 at all because like he could take... I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. So let's say we play knight a5. I'll show you what I was worried about. I was worried about take take and take and the engine doesn't think this works at all but but uh oh it's saying f4 here what if i just play something like this f5 okay here rook h8 oh yeah okay he's completely winning but i mean i'm completely winning but like it's not really like you want to allow these things so i was yeah, I guess actually I should have I could have completely allowed this thing. But I was kind of scared of of that threat of having the Greek grift and actually yeah, a Greek gift only works with a pawn on e5. So I guess I really shouldn't have been scared. So here I would probably play some knight e5 or something like that or or I was thinking bishop e8 and then takes and like let's say he, yeah, rook e1 sure takes D takes, and I was thinking something like this. I was gonna play f6, and here, and oh yeah, now it works because his pawn is on here. So yeah, I, I don't really know what to do here. My position looked really bad, so I was I was lucky to get a draw. So that's the end of today's video, guys. Make sure to check out my other videos in this uh, tournament so that you can, you know, get a better idea of how I, well I played in this tournament, other than this game, which was an 11-move draw. So that's the end of today's video, guys. Bye.